Okay, I would like to explain a bit about 2D planar transformations. That is uh, the, the title here, where you, um, or the topic, if you consider how to deform such uh, a square down here and how that can be moved around in the, in the coordinate system. So say we have an, an XY coordinate system uh, like this. Then one option you have is to take the square and then uh, shift it sideways, both in X and Y direction, uh, to uh, make a translation like this. Um, so that would simply be our translation. And that's one way of, of uh, moving an object or to transform an, an image. A different thing is to uh, take this one and then rotate it. So I'll try to draw it in, in a rotated way here. And this is what is known as an Euclidean uh, transformation. We also have um, and one property of the Euclidean transformation it is preserves the, the size of the object, it's a translation and a rotation of the object. Um, we can also try to scale it here. And this is known as a similarity uh, transform. And the idea with a similarity tra transform is to uh, make things uh, bigger or smaller, like zooming more or less um, as you would do in uh, Google Maps if you have a, a tablet and you uh, put two fingers on the tablet and then move them around. Then this is actually a similarity transformation they're using for, for making that uh, zoom effect, zoom and panorama effect, effect there. Good. And now we are missing two kinds of uh, transformations. We have what is known as an affine transformation, where you are able to um, to tilt the image. That is, you can take the upper part of the image and then push to to one of the sides. Um, that would be an affine transformation. And the final one is a perspective transformation. And we talked about this earlier when we should uh, try to map an image from a UAV taken at the uh, angle towards uh, the ground uh, that is not directly towards the ground and then the area covered on the ground by the camera will actually uh, be taking the, the shape and this is a perspective uh, transformation that we have here and for each of these transformations, we can associate a number, which is uh, the number of degrees of freedom that it is required to, de to describe this kind of motion. So for the translation part here, two degrees of freedom are required because we need to both have a translation in the x direction and a translation in the y direction. For the Euclidean uh, transformation, we need the two degrees of freedom from the translation, but we need one more to take into account the orientation or the change in, in orientation, how much it should be rotated. And we can build from there down to the similarity transform, which requires again uh, an additional um, element here because that's a scaling factor. And finally, for the, both the affine and the perspective transformations, they have six and eight degrees of freedom, respectively. Um, so to, to say that this in, in a different way, to be able to determine the translation uh, of this, we can take uh, one, I uh, should probably choose a different color. So I'll take a green one here. So if we have a point in the original uh, position here, and then we will uh, determine where the translated uh, 
uh, image will be, then it's enough just to specify a single corner. If we want to specify uh, the similarity transformation, then it's not enough with a single corner. Uh, I'll pick a yellow corner color for, for the other corner here, like this. So we have two points that should uh, that we should know how should move from the original point to the, to the similarity the transformed uh, image. And for each point, we have two equations, which is uh, useful for for determining two degrees of freedom. And when we have two matching pairs here, we have four equations, and therefore we can solve for, for four unknowns. For the affine transformation, the story is more or less the same. Uh, but instead of, of using two points, we need to use uh, three points. I'll just use a, a cyan color up here. So we need to have a specified, okay, where do three corners of this uh, square end up, or rectangle, if, if it was a rectangle initially, where do they end up in the transformed coordinate system? And you might be able to guess what the structure will be for the perspective transformation, because in, in this case we will need um, eight uh, degrees of freedom. That is, we need to have uh, four point correspondences to make this uh, work out in a proper way. So this is a bit about how to, to specify this. I haven't drawn these elements into the Euclidean uh, transformation because it uh, it's not enough with a single point, but two points is actually a bit too much for, for doing this. Uh, so yeah, you, you might want to say that two points are, are enough, um, but it will only be one of the points that actually match, and the second point, in this case the yellow, um, will just give you a scaling or a, an orientation, but it will not match completely, or it might not match uh, completely here. So how is the equations behind these uh, transformations? Um, that is, how do you move a point from the original space to, to the new one? And we'll take a look at this uh, up here. So let's first of all look at the translation. And the idea is to have our original coordinate x1 plus some value, let's just call it a, and that will give us the uh, new x value or x2. And similarly for the y coordinates, we add some value here and then we'll get the new uh, y coordinate. And this can be set up in a, in a specific way where we write that our new x coordinate and new y coordinates are in, in a vector. And then for um, determining the values of this vector, we will multiply this matrix containing a, a one or an identity matrix in the first two columns, and then the A and B value down here, and then multiply that with an extended vector or a homogeneous vector with x1, y1, and a one down here. And if we multiply this out for the first row, we'll have x2 equals one times x1 plus zero times y1 plus a times one. So that will give us our initial equation up here. And similarly for y2, we'll be given by y1 plus b. So this would be our way of, of describing the translation um, transformation that can be described by using uh, this matrix. Often we would like to make this a bit more generic. Um, at least it helps us in the, the last part where we want to, to do the perspective transformation. So we end up having both the input coordinates and the output coordinates in 
what is known as, as homogeneous coordinates. So we have x2, y2, and a 1 here. And then that is multiplied with this uh, matrix. Where again, we have the identity matrix, and now it's a 3 by 3 identity matrix. Um, for the two last elements here, we have the, the displacement groups in, in both x and y, like this. So far, so good. Um, sorry, I messed this up. Um, I need to go a bit back from here. It should be an A here. It should be a three by three matrix, not a three by four. I was just trying to copy the the pattern from over here. So x one, y one, and uh, one down here. So this will be our translation matrix, and we have two unknowns. That is our two degrees of freedom. Right. So the the next thing to to look into will be the uh, Euclidean um, which we can do in, in more or less the same way um, I write it up directly in the matrix uh, form that, that we had before so our final point in homogeneous coordinates is given by uh, the following matrix where we have the cosine of the angle we want to rotate sine of the angle minus sine of the angle and cosine again and we need to add these uh, translation vectors and the last row is uh, a quite simple uh, row down here with zero, 0, 1, which should be multiplied with uh, x1 and y1 coordinates here. And we have the two uh, translations in the part here, and this part is a rotation matrix that specifies how much the, um, the object or the image should be rotated. Um, and this is uh, given by, by this uh, uh, angle uh, theta. So here we have the Euclidean transformation, we have the translation up here, and uh, we can also include this uh, rigid transform, um, or the similarity transform, was it named? Like this, and it's more or less the same as the Euclidean transform with one uh, change, and that is the part containing the oh, sorry, should be a two here, and that is all the elements in the, the rotation part of the transformation matrix is multiplied with some kind of a scaling factor. So in this case, uh, the value s, so s times cosine of theta, s times sine of theta, minus s times sine of theta, and s times cosine of theta here. And again, we have the same displacement values as before. And we have our input point in, in homogeneous coordinates. So now we actually uh, have covered most of these um, uh, transformations. Um, and for the affine transformation, please note that up in uh, this part up here, we in fact only have uh, two degrees of freedom. because we have the scaling factor and we have our uh, angle that should be changed. 
and for the what is it now the, the affine transformation we don't limit this uh, rotation and scaling part to have this kind of structure where these two elements should be the same and these two should be um, have inverted their, their sign um, so it's uh, a completely freedom to to define whatever that, that will be here so this matrix will look a bit more like uh, this and now I need to change the the meaning of A and B and so we still have x1, y1, and a 1 here like this so what we have here is that um, the existing point over here will be a linear combination of uh, the input point um, plus some kind of uh, translation and all in all we have uh, six degrees of freedom to, to define whatever this uh, transformation looks like and you might guess what how the, the perspective transformation uh, looks like uh, now because it's just to reiterate this and fill out the, the two remaining parts of, of this, uh, this structure. So I'll see if I can make a copy of this. I'll just put it down here like this. So, and Instead of these uh, two zeros down here, we need to modify this a bit. Uh, EF, and then we have G and H. So let's see if we can uh, make sense of what this actually means for the affine transformation. And then there is a bit to, to take into account here for the perspective transformation because it's bit more difficult to, to deal with but uh, it's it's not that uh, problematic so for the affine transformation if we multiply it out the the two uh, the product here on the right hand side we will end up having x2 is equal to a times x1 plus b y1 plus c and similarly for y2 and in this case it will be d times x1 plus e y1 plus f so if we know the x1 and y1 and we have the coefficients of, of the transformation matrix we can determine x2 and y2 directly so far so good for the perspective transformation it's a bit different uh, because if we calculate this part out then we'll end up with x2, y2, and 1 should be equal to. And then we have uh, a, x1, plus b, e, y1, plus c, the same as up here. d, a, and f should be multiplied with uh, x1, y1, and f. And now we have the problematic part because now we have uh, g times x1 plus h y1 plus 1 and all these equations should hold and there's just uh, this minor issue that uh, g times h1 plus h times y1 plus 1 is probably not 1 uh, it can be anything else than, than 1 in, in most cases um, so to ensure that this is the case we need to scale all of these elements uh, by this uh, value so to be able to determine the x2 value and the y2 value using the perspective transformation we need actually to divide their values 
with the appropriate value down here for the one. So we end up having x2 should be equal to a times x1 plus b times y1 plus c divided with g times x1 plus h times y1 plus 1 and similarly for the y coordinate a no not a but uh, d times x1 plus e y1 plus f divided by d times x1 plus h times y1 plus 1 down here so these are the actual transformation uh, equations that is uh, needed to to do the perspective transformation. So far, so good. Um, so if we are given these uh, unknowns that defines the, the transformation, we can determine them. Or if we are given them, we can determine how um, a point x1 and y1 is mapped to the new point x2 and y2. So far, so good. But what I mentioned earlier was that given enough point pairs, that is x1, y1, and x2 and y2 that are matched up, that is they should be part of the same equations, we should be able to determine all these uh, unknown variables that defines the, the transformation. So let's take a look at how we can actually uh, do that. And uh, I want to, to demonstrate the structure to you. I will not uh, go it through by, by a numerical example, but uh, that should be, be possible to, to deal with. The idea is to change the equations up here to something that is linear, because then we can uh, use linear algebra to, to solve that. And let's take a look at how that can be achieved. The main problematic part here is that we have a fraction. So we have something divided with something else. And to get rid of the fraction, we can multiply with the denominator in uh, both uh, places, or in, in both sides of the equation, which ends us up having the, the following. So we have x2 multiplied with g times x1 plus h times y1 plus 1, which should be equal to a times x1 plus b times y1 plus c. So that's one of the equations. And the second would be that y2 should be multiplied with gx1 plus hy1 plus 1, and then to send. And then we have uh, d x1 plus not b but e y1 plus f. And depending on what is the unknown and what is the known, this is in fact a, a linear equation. And it's linear because if we take a look at all the elements that is uh, uh, present inside it, uh, or the values that we need to determine, then we have uh, g, and we have h, a, b, and c, and they are all multiplied with something that is a, a constant when we have this known mapping uh, from x1, y1, to x2, and y2. So if we have this mapping is known that is x1, y1, x2, and y2 for this uh, matching point pair, we know all these values, then we can fill them in and what is left is a constant times g plus a constant times h plus a constant times a or is equal a constant time a plus a constant time b and a constant time c plus some constant here. And similarly for, for the structure down here, 
um, for all the unknowns, they are just multiplied with a constant. And before we can set this up as a regular uh, linear set of linear equations, then uh, we should uh, separate all the things related to the unknowns on one side and then all the rest on, on the different side. So we can take this uh, part with the a over here. So we have minus a, or actually I think it's better to write a times, um, yeah, minus x1 times a, like this. And then we have minus y1 times b. We have minus c. So these were all these three terms that was moved to, to the right. And now we have uh, g and h uh, left here. So we have plus x1, x2 times g plus x2, y1 times h. That should be equal to not minus 1, but minus x2. So this was one equation. Um, and uh, the similar equation down here would be uh, minus x1 times d minus y1 times e minus f plus and then x1 y2 times g plus y1 y2 times h and that should be equal to minus y2. So it's the same equations, we have just structured them a, a bit differently. And this can be written in, in matrix form. And what we are left uh, to have to, to do here is to collect uh, four pairs of these. Again, because we have uh, eight unknowns, and that requires us to have uh, eight equations to be able to, to solve that. And when that's solved, or when that's set up, we can use uh, some some standard techniques in uh, NumPy to, to solve for this, and we get out um, the values of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. That actually defines this uh, perspective transformation. So this was an overview of all the, the different uh, 2D planner uh, transformation of, of images that we can combine. And um, for actually stabilizing a video, you could uh, try them out uh, one by one. Um, experience tells us that uh, it's not enough just to use translation to uh, to correct uh, the, the motion in the video, because if you tilt the camera up and down, then it's not enough to just account for, for the translation. It's not enough either just to account for the similarity transformation. It still appears a, a bit wonky for us. Um, affine and perspective transformations are, are both doing better. Um, and the results I showed you in an earlier video was using this uh, perspective transformation for, for making the, the stabilization. So I hope this gave you an overview of the possible 2D planner transformations and how to actually deal with them in, when calculating with them.